People ask me, what made you choose Autumn as an editor? And to that, I say, she has great comedic timing and is a professional. When I first met Autumn, she was a brand new editor at SourceFed trying to work her way up in the industry. Let's do the questionnaire now. Do you want to do it out here? Uh, sh no. Let's do it in my room. Oh, yikes. No thanks. Okay. Uh, is this, is this your desk? Is this your desk? What's your desk? Like, what do you have a desk. You can sit on the ground. Question number one, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, I... I didn't expect that. That was actually the appropriate answer. It was a trick question. Where do you see yourself in the future? Only a clairvoyant could answer that properly. And I can't risk having a clairvoyant, let alone any mutant, on my team again. If the government found out, well, there goes my employee. And I have to do the whole search all over again. How do you feel about House of Cards Season 5? Again, a perfect answer. There's no point in seeing House of Cards Season 5. It's dog trash and beats you over the head with its parallels to reality. Oh, immigration ban. That came out of left field, and they talked about it for two seconds, and was very much out of Frank's character. And who gives a fuck about Tom Yates? Do you have any experience with, uh, the Dark Road Man? Good, you don't know about it. Okay. Not all questions were answered correctly, though, as you'll see right here. Say you and your best friends were out at the mall, and a man walks up to you and says, These Yeezys are on sale for $350, and these are real Yeezys. You check them out online, and you can confirm they are real Yeezys. Do you get them, or do you let them sit? Huh? Kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, the resale value on Yeezys is exceptionally high. She could easily double her money. And then I thought about it more, and I realized I'm hiring her to edit. The less she knows about making money, the better. What do you have nightmares about? Oh, this exact thing that's happening right now. Unbelievable. It's exactly like I hoped. She has social anxiety, which works out perfectly because we were planning on keeping her in the back room. Before I left, I had to inquire about the state of her room. She had a full-time job, yet she has a blow-up mattress and no desk. How do you live like this? That's a good question, Jesus Christ. I don't know, I sleep most of the day. I can't wait for Autumn to someday meet Matthew Peake. I don't know why. And you're in here 24-7 pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. That seems so desolate. Yeah, it's bad. I almost want to hire you just to bring you out of this. I, you gotta stop saying that unless you're serious about it, because it's giving me a lot of hope. Well, guess what, Autumn? No, you don't have a job, though. Fuck. Do you believe in Anubis? Do you have Egyptian beliefs? Why don't you believe in something normal like Hinduism or like Johnny Depp's religion, whatever he does? Who's Johnny Depp? I'm sorry, uh, Johnny Depp? Star of Transcendence? Should we ask Autumn if we should do it? Because she seems like the most sane one. Yeah. Yeah? Let's ask Autumn. Well, okay. let's ask her. See what she thinks. Okay. Hi, Autumn. Hey. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can she hear me? She, she said, said yes. yes. How are you? Uh, so, what do you think about this as an idea? The IGN Fun Run Nightmare Obstacle Course. Is this good? He has to do an obstacle course to redeem himself? Uh, bad. That's bad. Um, so I think we do it. You guys down? Yeah. Perfect. Full support for my crew. Summer 2017 was gonna be a banger. She's there. Go back, go back. She'll see you through the door. This is a shit. What? Close the damn door! Hurting. This is our office and no one's taking it seriously. This is crazy. Steve, you I'm are so happy that you're you here and you built this whole thing. What? Huh? If you could describe this place in one word, what would it be? Austin awesome Powers. Propane. Those what? are two words. Wait, what is that thing we're going to this weekend? No more questions. No more questions. Okay. Wait, what? God damn it! The nerve of Autumn to speak up both violated and perturbed me. I knew that if we were signing with Rooster Teeth, we'd have to change her attitude. Unfortunately, when I went to manor school, it was in second grade, and they taught me how to eat an Oreo with a fork. This is a true story, and I'm pretty sure that I have no right to tell Autumn how manners work. But James and Kib have more than enough experience. Please shut up. Keep it down a little bit. Okay, when you talk back to us like that, it's just really fucking disrespectful. You just know your plate. No reason. Yeah. And I'll be all right. Okay. Jesus, dude. Unbelievable. It was pretty clear that Kib and James had their work cut out for them. Autumn was unruly. I've been around a lot of people pissed and fuck off, and I dealt with it a certain kind of way. You can't deal with that right now. What are you doing? It's, the focus is avoiding your face. We have to teach her some manners, dude. Fuck! Dude, it's okay. You can pissed. Teach I know. No, you pissed. So I left my fucking hat on on my beanie on. Fuck! Lesson number one, Autumn. When somebody invites you over... To a meeting. You come over because that's the obvious thing to do. You sit on the floor. 
Okay. All right, so how should we start this out? I'd first like to just say, oh, and you're leaving. Autumn, 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 yeah, Autumn, you're Autumn. Not, what the hell? We're teaching you a lesson. Sit back You're walking down. away. And watch your tone, might I add. We brought you here today to talk about your filthy mess of a life. If you know anything about Autumn, you know that material possessions aren't her thing. It's really affecting us all in the office. You are selling drugs. What's that about? Your feet literally look like the inside of a vacuum bag. Not only do Autumn's feet look like the inside of a vacuum bag, they also look like the outside of a martyr's final bloodlust. You literally made me walk outside with no shoes on. No one made I didn't make you do anything. anything. Did I make her do anything? You didn't make her do a darn darn diddly darn 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 make, thing. I can't make anyone do anything. I can't make my girlfriend go down on me. Okay, so, well, number one, give me five bucks. Now, please. Well, number one, so we can move forward. Why? Don't ask uh, questions, that's rule number five. Don't ask questions. We'll get there though. All right, rule number two, as obviously everyone knows this, elbows on the table at all times. If you take your elbows off the table, then you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of Jews. Ah, uh, I could almost use that clip right up until the end there. Rule number three, elbows on the table at all times. Rule number four, you have to spread the gravel evenly. If you don't spread it evenly, then, then there's gonna be like balls of grass that start to grow out and it's very important to get, cause like when you use weed killing it, ow. A spider spin. So we're gonna go to sleep on the boys only club set and you have to sing us a song to put us to sleep. So that's rule number 17 and that's how you become a teen dream. It's never too late to become a teen dream. And I have to admit, Autumn did just that. The boys fell asleep peacefully. Jesus Christ, dude. Hold on the floor. Let's see who's not around. You take out the trash for me when I say, here you go. I can't pick that up. It's very light, Autumn. I know you have scraglosis, dude. Rule number five, always be on guard. Rule number six, don't push things out of my hand. Rule number seven, do your job. That You're the trash man. I'm tired of James and Kip fighting. It just seemed like the other day they were at each other's throats. Hey, you Uncle Pitch. Rule number 10, your new hat sucks compared to the old one. Which one? I mean rule number not 10, which one? Rule well, number 11, one? none of them. Rule number 12, what was that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Rule number 13, Ollie off the wall. Ow. That's not my problem. You signed a contract to be here full time, 40 hours a day, fix it. Fix it, Autumn, fix it. Make it right. But she didn't make it right. She didn't even apologize. Anyway, so I should probably get back to work, Autumn. Yeah, you've really been distracting us. Like, we need to get back to work too. We gotta be writing all this, and you should be fucking finishing everything up. And watch your goddamn tone is kind of my final word for you, you know? With me, the tone, watch it. The tone that you have with me sometimes. And once again, clean your goddamn Walt Disney feet. So do you guys like edit out the F words or? I wanted to get everybody's interpretation of Denver, Colorado. I wanted to see if he did right by everybody because actions speak louder than words and an interview can only show so much, but his time in the office was his true resume. Did he hurt you? What was happening? What do you have to think, little man? I said, what do you have to do, man? Why do people believe in astrological signs? Seriously, it's so fucking stupid. So this is the girl who worships a little Egyptian god in her room. The first time I went to Autumn's house was unfortunately not my last. And while I was there, I found out that she worships a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What about Anubis makes, like, you believe? Isn't he like the god of the dead? I don't know, he's hot. That's the only reason you worship him, because he's hot! That's your ideal man, Anubis. <laughs> That's so funny. A wolf, a wolf man. Like, with a cane, with a dark cane. With a cane like a golden. Travels around via via pharaoh wagon. Oh, oh my god. god. Like, travels around do. via sky bridge. <laughs> you know, how some couples have like a the celebrity crush that they're allowed to fuck. Ow, Ian's is like Ian's is like Jessica Alba or something, and then hers is just Anubis. The actual the all Egyptian god. No. Autumn, what do you ask Anubis for? New dreams. You just have the same dream every night, so you just ask him for your dream. Please, sir. Uh, please, Anubis. One more dream. One new one, please. I keep having dreams of the salamander man. <laughs> he just goes, very well. <laughs> She's the massive flaming dog. My biggest worry was Autumn. We try not to take her anywhere, but since she's a part of the team, Rooster Teeth wanted her to come along. If you can just talk to anybody, don't do anything embarrassing. Just hey, your boots are untied, Autumn. What the hell is this? You want people to see those Disney class? feet? Oh my God, they're like clogs. This is the first time I've like ever worn shoes. What? 
What were you trying to do, Autumn? Trying to act like you know social norms? Stay in your lane, little boy. Autumn, you can't you park here to go back down to the garage. Jesus Christ, yeah, then they got the four point turn here. What the fuck? Well, I really got myself into a pickle here. Remember back when I said I never make mistakes? Well, I started carpooling with Autumn. I can't see. This is the last time I will be carpooling with you. First off, your car is disgusting. What does this mean? What? I don't want to know. I'm interested to see what Kim's like today. What? Oh my god! Was that Jeremy? Did you just. Did I? Reverse, just reverse. Cool, okay. let's park upstairs today. I'll just keep reversing. Why is he, I, can't I don't know why he's walking it. like that. Okay, I guess we are. It's confrontation time. Cool. Jesus. First off, A, why are you in the parking garage? And B, are you okay? Because that's an absolutely massive dent. A point, I'm tinkering down here. B point, I'm completely fine. As you can see, I won that fight. Wow, without sunglasses, you really have a childlike gaze. Do you have a problem with children of gays? I don't know when James's mission's going to start or how long it's going to end. All I know is it just means there's another friend out of the office. And with Parker gone and Kib's deportation on the horizon, I'd be left here all alone with Autumn. There has to be a law about picking your nubby little jaundice toes at a company table. But to my knowledge, there isn't. Stop it. If you think about it logically, there's a good chance that picking at your feet with tweezers is causing all of the cuts on your toes. But I'm probably mistaken. What are you writing down? What is that? That's just a reminder. Can I see that? Make three prayer for him. No, stop picking your, what does this mean? Stop picking at your toes. What does this mean though? Where do you go after the office? Do you still have a home? Sometimes you have to call it quits, but this wasn't one of those times. I was gonna make Autumn open up no matter what, because here at Sugar Pine 7, we're a family. Are you even gonna care that I'm gonna play you a song that I wrote specifically for you? Well, here it goes, hopefully you can hear it. <laughs> Autumn didn't like the song. And that's just the thing, I don't know what she likes. I don't know how to get through to her. What is up with you? Why are you so quiet all the time? I try so hard to get involved in your life and you're so distant all the time. You know when they say miracles don't happen? Well, what do you think after this? I can't hear that well. Seriously, that's... Do you just need a hearing aid? The whole time that we thought Autumn wasn't interested in us was purely because she's a bit deaf. She actually legally can't hear a thing at all. So you're probably wondering, how does she edit the videos? Well, she uses foreigner sonar and winged vibrations. And she's read the lips of a thousand men. There's more to you than meets the eye. You're like a transformer meets any farm animal. Ever since we realized that Autumn actually is deaf, we've been trying our hardest to bring back her sense of hearing. All right, Autumn, so I know your hearing was taken from you because you accidentally prayed to the god of Ra, which everyone knows if you pray to the god of Ra, he takes your hearing. I didn't know that. Have you seen the Prince of Egypt? So what I did was I made this little device. I call it the Hear Good 2.0. What do you think? Can you hear me? James? Yeah. I can't see. You just took your glasses off. Did you actually take her sight? I didn't do anything. I put the hair good 2.0 on her. What do you, what do you want from me? I don't know. She can't see. You made her editor shit, blind. Dude. I mean, I can take a whack at editing if you want me to. No, James. Okay, try to edit. Foreign territory. I'm going to do a little eye test. Kind of like they do in the... What's it called? Doctor's office? Yeah, but what's the doctor that does the Optometrist. eyes? Optometrist. Orthodontist. Entomologist. Orthodontist? Who's the one that put braces on your eyes? Uh, miss, the miss, the miss, the missed, missed opportunity. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna do this little test. It's okay. kind of like when you go. No, like, keep talking. I can hear you now. It's There's okay. No need to yell. Am I yelling? You're yelling so loud. How can you? I thought you can hear now. Why can't you? Should we toes show to the sound of music? Yeah. Be careful with those because they're very sharp huh? and they're radioactive, and there's bolts of electricity shooting off them. Wait, are you serious? Snap into it. Nope. Don't walk any more forward. Just stand still. Okay. Are you ready to hear your first song? I'm ready. Sense of sound. Give, give I her think back that she should. If, if she only can use one sense, like maybe we should take away smell because I mean we fart all day long. Okay, yeah, take away your yeah. sense of smell. Do it, yeah, cool. I'm gonna figure it out. Jesus Christ. Me and Kip went to the vape shop, but the guy accidentally sold us his bottle and it was filled with the tears of 36 genies. 
And so basically what that does is it gives you one power wish. And the power wish can be used to rewrite reality. How do you make a genie cry? I don't know! Lift up your little mannequin head. Okay. Up close, you're a bit of a monster. You're gonna have to smell this. Okay. Now, when you smell it, uh -huh. you have to be very clear okay. to picture one thing in your head. One thing. I want that one thing to be alphabet soup. Smell this. <sighs> Little genie from Brooklyn, take away her sense of smell. Can you see? Oh, yeah. Wait. It doesn't smell like farts in here. It doesn't smell like anything in here. Dude, you're a scientist genius. Autumn. Autumn. Can you turn that down? Is it too loud? Yeah. Why is that the only song you listen to now? It's the best song. No, it's not. It's weird, kind of. James, are you okay? I'm fine. It sounded like that situation isn't really going super well. Like, maybe you need to handle it kind of better. What situation? What are you talking about? That one, in there. You yeah. were listening to me on the phone? I didn't make you that helmet to just go around being a little wise crick. Why else did you make it? What's a wise crick? Uh, a, a wise crick is basically a cricket that's started to enter the further stages of evolution. It's basically a cricket that can hear well. I didn't want you to listen to my conversations, okay? With great power comes great responsibility. And with the ability to hear so well, Autumn will have to learn to control herself. Are you gonna play that for Warren? Don't just barge in when I'm in my time, okay? This is my time right now. There's two rooms in this office for a reason. Autumn. Forget it. I'm gonna go take a shit. Don't follow me to the bathroom, please. James, are you okay? Are you serious? I care about you, and I want you to hear well, but I don't, I don't care. After James dropped off Devin on the highway, he received a call from Lauren, his girlfriend, saying that their apartment had been broken into. Lauren? Lauren? Hey boy. Uh, what happened? What'd they take? My state quarter collection. They took your state quarter collection? Yeah. Oh my god, babe, I'm so sorry. I know you've been working on that for years. So long! I know. Shortly after, Alyssa called me saying that our house was also broken into. To make matters even weirder, Autumn mentioned that her house was broken into as well. Our house, like, always gets broken into, so I didn't really think anything of it. Great. Since whoever was breaking into our houses was clearly targeting us. Do you want to play a game with me? I'm so lonely. You don't even like me. I love you! Oh. I love you! I'm lying! Autumn, I need you to uh, probably get the podcast. Tick tock. I couldn't believe that this is how I was going to die. What the hell? Oh. Oh. Ah. Jesus! You guys scared me! You scared me! You scared me! Come look at this riddle, come look at this riddle. What do you think of this? Autumn. Autumn! Autumn! Oh, she's not wearing her. The riddle! What do you make of the riddle? The riddle! No, the riddle! Come on, what does it mean? Why are you doing the grudge thing? Do you want me to tell you what I'll do to you? No. First, I will take each one of your strands of hair, tie each one in a knot, connect the knots to a series of live beetles, encourage the beetles to have their way with themselves, it'll be masturbating for hours, then the beetles will flinch and climax and die and release your hair, and you, being turned on as ever, will enter into my kingdom. This has unfortunately been going on for longer than I'd care to admit. It's only gotten worse and worse, and finally, today, I decided to end Alfredo's harassment of Autumn. You'll be so damn wet, you'll need all of this. It's really weird, Alfredo. What do you say? I see that little smile. I see that little smile. I see your little smile. And I could see a dark fire of passion developing in Alfredo's one eye. It was terrifying. I also want to talk to you in private about something uh, related to the office environment. Why are you motioning to my princess? I mean, Autumn. Can we talk in private? Because this is going to get really awkward if you talk about it in front of her. Wait, my, should I put my private parts back into my castle? I don't know, actually. All right.
On the way to the conference room, I tripped on one of the pieces of glass from the broken wine bottle. God damn it. Landed right on the only bad hip that I have. Uh, we can just talk right here. What's up with you and Autumn? You mean my sexual advances towards her? I want to put it in sideways until she squeals like the pig that she wants to be. Oh, fuck. Does my, am I getting like a lot of chin here? Or, like a lot of under chin? Uh-huh. I've been eating a lot less, trying to get a little bit less, I see like, a little patch of pubic forest on your chin. It's all I can grow. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Alfredo. Uh, don't put it in Autumn because in-office relationships are unsafe and unsatisfactory to what we're trying to do here at Sugar Pine 7. Is that, is that, do you understand? I understand that I'm not going to listen because love has no limits. Speaking of having power over people, Funhouse has been trying to steal my editor, Autumn. In order to dissuade her from leaving, I set up a fake job interview. Autumn thought she was going to meet with a member of Funhouse, when in reality... There she is. My little girl with the legs for days. My seven foot princess. Oh, how her hair swinging in the wind like my dick when it's hot. I had Alfredo pretend to be Bruce Green. I need to find her some food to impress her. She eats like a Wolverine. Dirty diaper. Dirty napkins. Old meat carcasses. All of it's good. I should practice my Bruce Green voice. Oh, hi, I'm Bruce Green from Funhouse. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Bruce Green. Okay, perfect. All I hoped was that in the walk over to Autumn, Alfredo would be able to improve his Bruce Green impression. Bruce Green from Funhouse. You don't look like Bruce Green at all. I shaved. Is that a mask? What are you talking about? Oh, oh no. Alfredo, why are you here? Why are you wearing a mask? How did you see my throat? Where'd my throat. Where'd you get a glass mask? I thought I was interviewing with Funhouse. He's really excited. No, you, you're not. Hmm, it's a shame that Funhouse interview didn't work out. I needed to get you out of the office, and I know you'd never listen to me because of my 16 eyes and the one that falls off whenever I think. Yeah. Funny story, when I first met Alfredo, he was writing for the New York Times. Actually, I misremembered, he was writing snuff poems to the lead editor at the New York Times. And now look at him, he's fallen in love with a would-be traitor. I wonder why, the, why you don't give me a chance, any chance to prove my worth to you. Alfredo, I have a boyfriend, and also, you look like three men falling off of each other. The biggest part of my penis is this beginning of it, the shaft. Mm -hmm. My shaft is very wide, Ugh. and my dickhead is pointy like a pine tree. What? It's like a pine tree bristles. Christmas time is coming early. You want to see it? No, not at all. Don't, don't, Alfredo, come on. It's gonna break the table. All right, all right, all right. Put it back, put it back. This is why I didn't want to give you a ride. You're being weird. Take me back to the office now. I'm right. getting horny. Oh my God. Please put your dick away. He's popping out of your shirt. I don't want that. Paper towel, right? I don't want that. Really paper towel, it's just like really I'll take anything else. Offer me anything else. I was hesitant to let famous actor James Allen McCune grant Autumn her one wish. And then I realized what better combination. A traitor for a traitor. What's, what's, uh, what's your wish, Autumn? Why are you so drunk? Like, I'm always... Honestly, Alfredo's been making me like super uncomfortable lately. I don't know, maybe you could dress up as me so he hits on you. That'd be cool. The seven is an axe. Yeah. I understand everyone. Uh -huh. Here I go. Oh my god, that almost made it in. That is my small princess. Oh, she's waiting for me. You look like Little Mermaid, the big red hot folk. Autumn, your hair, it's like, it's like the January cri crime radar in this neighborhood. Thanks. Off the charts. Oh. I was wondering, may I touch you? Is Wait a minute. I... Famous doctor Mickey Mouse. Here, about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, the oh, carrots. <laughs> They're rotten carrots, oh, dude. Oh, 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 no, no, no. What are you doing? Come on. Hey, James, don't eat those. James. Were those your fucking carrots? No, no, my carrots. Why would I just Who's put your carrots? carrots were those? Autumn? Were those your carrots? Well, why are you looking for my carrots? They smelled like shit. They were rotting. James was eating literally everything. I had to put them somewhere. That's disgusting. How long have those been in there? Years, probably. We've only had this office for two months. Oh. Uh. It was only a matter of time until Funhouse got their grubby senile fingers on Autumn, my editor. Today was her test run at their office. To gather information and report back, I sent with her the man I trust the most. Okay. 
Where'd you even find that camera? Steve wouldn't let me take the other camera for the day, so I decided to take this one. It's like it has foliage on it. You find it in the woods. Why are you wearing that? Trying to dress to impress, Autumn. I'm gonna get this job. I didn't realize that when I said spy on Autumn's interview, the only thing he would hear was, you have an interview with Funhouse Kib. Only you and not Autumn. Autumn, just don't embarrass me in there. What are you talking about? Well, with the whole few. You, you, why do you have the banana? Jesus. Ring ding ding, everybody. We're here. We didn't, we didn't say bring a camera guy. Can, no, 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 no. I came for the, uh, the interview. So I'll be back for the interview. What do you the think? That's Big fine. 10 what is, what is minutes. Uh, at Lawrence. Thank God I could rest easy knowing that they weren't going to hire Kib. Uh, why do you want to work for Funhouse? I've always wanted to work here. I just kind of got stuck with Steven and Subject, you know? Oh, yeah. He's sticky. Bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Clingy Sorry. is what I would say. Do you have any experience, like, formally school? Not really, no. You could call it a trade school, but for film. It doesn't exist anymore, it went under. Dear God. All I was thinking was if this is what Funhouse is used to, any other editor would be a shoe in to hire. To be honest, this is just like California State regulate. We have to do an interview. Yep. Yeah, um, I mean, we're pretty much. We're, I mean, what's your favorite color? Uh, <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Also, I really want to fuck Steven. Uh, in a, not in a good way, but in a bad yeah, way. No. So I want to take you away. This is me. the first step to that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It'll be the first time for him in a long while. Hey, she's she already did she's it. She's gone. She did it. Holy shit! Yeah. How would you do that? Oh <laughs> my god! Oh, god. Oh, god. Yeah, that's like half the time. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I think we should start. Oh yeah! yeah. Look, hey. Man, man. Motor. I started thinking maybe Funhouse is where Autumn belongs. They treat her a lot better. She has more fun working there. We don't really have much to offer here. Obviously, I'd miss her, but if it's what she wants, it's what she wants. I was also concerned by the lack of Kib. Autumn? <laughs> have you seen Autumn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have worn Kib. There are more than two rooms in the Funhouse office. The only reason we got our office with two rooms is because that's all Kib can really take in. Any more, and he's guaranteed to get lost. She's Anybody? like this small, maybe up to here. She could be here or here, maybe here. Brown blonde sorry. hair, she morphs. No, I'm sorry. Kib. Autumn? What the fuck are you You came doing? back for me. Where the hell did you go? I went pee. Did I miss my interview? Kid, they're not interviewing you. You're trying to sabotage me, you evil wretch. Well, at least they found Kib so he could make his way home. I just couldn't believe that that was the last time I was ever going to see Autumn. Didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. At least we have Matt Peak. You know, I'm sure he'll. I'm sure he'll do fine. You're back. Oh, bro. I thought I, I had thought that I had a, thought that I lost you. No, I'm here. I'm fine. Well, well, well. Look who comes crawling back. Just kidding. I guess Autumn actually declined the job. She said something about it not feeling right and that she loves us or something. But I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I was just glad she was back. Well, I pretended to get you a gift. You want to see? Oh, Alfredo, the. Disgusting. Well, it's broccoli mixed with sweet tarts. God, Zooks! Have you been eating oysters, or is that just me? Oh, that fishy smell? It's probably me. I missed it! Brought you a gift, Alfredo. You brought me a gift? I said it wrong. I meant to say <laughs> gift. Just the way you like it. Oh, <gasps> a perfectly liquid banana! Molded to perfection! Caught him! You got me a gift? I did. Do you mind if I... No, go for it. So after taking showers to make sure we didn't get any weird diseases from the dog, we all came back to the office because Kib was approached by Alfredo. It's afraid things broke. You're probably wondering why I brought you here tonight, Autumn. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty obvious <laughs> what's going on in the office lately. It's obvious to me. It's obvious to Alfredo. It's to me. To me. After hearing about Autumn's potential love interest in Kib, Alfredo asked Kib to wingman him to try to let down Autumn easily and gain Alfredo's affection. I know that you're in love with me. I know I'm handsome. I know that I'm smart. I know that I'm funny. Yes, I know that you'd I... you would make the joke about the washing machine, and I love that one. You Do remember you remember the one? washing machine? I'll tell it. I'll tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. So the man on the... Right. So the man the could, couldn't... Couldn't... The man couldn't... You're butchering open. it. We just can't be. I'm flattered. And there's someone else in the office I think that might be a better fit. 
for you. James? No, Alfredo. There must be something no. I can do. Alfredo, you freak me out. But I've never experienced le, le Jesus. How's it going? Do you want me to whisper some uh, 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 words of uh, sexual wisdom? I'm gonna try this, this works every time. You go up to her, you go, I need a t-shirt and pants on, do you understand? So I need to take your turn off. Do you understand? Honestly, thank God Alfredo didn't say the first thing. It's going well, dude. I bet she's dripping wet. Drip! I'm so excited to be part of my girls again! Where do you guys think we're going? We're going to the to the movie! We're gonna go see Spectrum! Sorry, I meant I'm on the spectrum! You have violent eyes and piercing red wick. Have you seen the wicker man on Jure? Your lady's like Blumpkins? I was interested to see how Alfredo would get along with a group of two girls. Alfredo himself doesn't concern himself with any gender. He moves fluidly through different phases at a moment's notice. That doesn't make conversation any easier for him, though. A Blumpkin patch? No, like where you give a blowjob on the toilet after someone gives a shit. Ugh. And then you bake the seeds? Well, you certainly spread them. And, and then you put the oil on and some salt and then you bake them. We're talking about two different things, Samuel. Well. This is fun, actually. Like, we get a girl's day. You like Kip? I mean, like, he's a fine person. I don't know. Yeah, he's fine. He's real fine. Yeah. Would you date him? No, Jesus. Oh, this is so fucking awkward. <laughs> Alfredo! Sorry! That wasn't for you! It could that was be. for the goat! Are you the goat? No, I'm not the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> you're, just, you're just a little fucking glutton, aren't you, Alfredo? <laughs> You've talked to me more than now than ever. How about you chill out? I am chill, little boy. Hey, hmm? How you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm okay. 